Hello. So in the last session we discussed about base isolation method. That was our first part in the session called structural controls. Now we'll be seeing further structural controls, or you can say the damping units. Uh, we will be discussing mostly the all other damping units that are used in the current scenarios in the construction industry. Those are termed as what we can say PEDs. So what do we mean by PEDs? So basically PED stands for passive energy dissipation devices. That means it uses an extra mechanism to transmit or you can say to convert the energy from one form to another. That means it uses an absorber type of material to convert the ground shaking motion caused due to an earthquake to transfer it into an energy forms. Okay? So there are basically various types of PED devices used in the current construction industries. We will be naming first all of them, then we will be discussing each one of them. So they are basically the first one is viscous fluid damper. We will be discussing all the dampers type in detail further on. Second is viscoelastic damper. The third one will be metallic damper. Fourth one will be tuned mass damper. So you can say TMDs. Fifth one will be the friction damper. So these are the six categories that are bifurcated under passive energy dissipation devices or you can say PEDs. In comparison to base isolation method, base isolation is cheaper of all these categories but these are uh, used for various skyscraper buildings across the world that have been currently using this type of technologies. TMD, tuned mass tempers is the most innovative technology that has been used in the construction industry. So first we will be seeing the first case that is viscous fluid damper. Now for that we will be discussing the distinction or you can say the difference between natural and added damping. So this is a portal frame as you can see here consisting of two columns and a beam. It has a natural damping. Natural damping means that it has a structural damping. Whenever we construct a building or you can say whenever we construct a frame it has it inherent its own properties due to the material characteristics and therefore it already possesses some amount of structural damping in it. So xi is the structural property dependent on the system mass, stiffness and inherent energy dissipation mechanics. So the damping or you can say the natural damping we take from 0.5% to 7% depending upon the structure or the category of structure that we will be dealing with. Next is the added damping. Added damping means the PD devices that we will be using it. So this in this case as you can see C. Here a damper term C is being used which will be adding to the damping effects that the structure inherits in its own. So now the structural property dependent upon the system mass, stiffness and the added damping coefficient C. Priorly it was inherent due to the energy dissipation mechanisms and now we will be adding some damping coefficient C. So the damping that we have added to the structure is 10% to 30%. So you can see if the damping is 0.5 to 7% then we generally go with the structural damping effects only. We are not supposed to produce or are not supposed to add any further mechanisms to it. But when the damping is around 10 to 30% or the effect of the earthquake is very uh, harsh in such cases we use added dampings in that. So as you can see in the graph itself effect of added damping or you can say the viscous damper in it. So this was the original uh, structure and after introducing the viscous damper the pseudo electric the pseudo spectral acceleration g decreases as well as the spectral displacement 2 decreases. This is the flow displacement that we are talking about. So these are the various categories of viscous dampers that are being used. As you can see here, this is a piston mechanism which consists of a fluid in it. So this fluid gets converted into heat energy and then it forms a piston mechanism some kind of thing and due to that interchange of energy it resists all the external forces that are applied on it. So this is a fluid damper within inverted chevron brace as you can see here in Sacramento, California. This is also a type of fluid damper with a diagonal bracings provided. 
so this is a toggle brace damping system as you can see here this depend upon the type of damping or type of structure that we are dealing with so as you can see here the mechanism is here installed here and it is connected with other two legs of the b2 or you can say the other two legs of the portal frame 2 the original figure you can see here it is from hunting uh, huntington tower boston that is in massachusetts it is a new 38 story steel frame building and in that case we have used this toggle brace damping system so now we'll be having a look at the video to get a detailed description of it this is the mechanism that we are talking about this is the oil or you can say fluid filled in it so it generally acts as a shock absorber in the vehicles that you have seen so it is placed diagonally so whenever the bay or you can say portal frame moves the piston acts as a friction damper to it or you can say the friction material to it and then this is a live example of this left side figure or left side structure is viscous without any viscous dampers and this right side is with viscous dampers so you can see there is a huge amount of decrease in the lateral motion or you can say the horizontal displacement these are the various categories of uh, viscous dampers that are being used this is how actually it is being used in the construction industry the framing is being done on the columns as you can see here and these are the examples of the structures that are being using this viscous dampers clear so this is all about viscous dampers or you can say fluid viscous dampers next we'll be dealing with viscoelastic damper now viscoelastic damper is basically uh, it is a viscoelastic material sandwich between steel plates so as you can see here these are the steel plates and a viscoelastic material is being sandwiched between them it was developed in 1960s for basically wind applications and further it was transferred to sustain the earthquake loads too so as you can see here this is the actual figure of it viscoelastic damper and this is the uh, figure that is being used of this site itself so there is a center plate and a steel flange as you can see here and the v v that is viscous elastic dampers or the viscous elastic materials are being sandwiched in a plate type of structure next is friction damper so this is a friction damper that we are talking about friction damper basically pal cross basing friction damper is been used and this is the actual photograph of how it basically looks like and this is the uh, elevation and plan of it so you can see here this is the friction damper it is supported on all four corners by bracings this is the column surface and this is the beam so this is the actual photograph of how this friction damper is being placed in an actual structure so as the ground shakes or ground motion accelerates this friction damper moves in all the directions clear it can move in x y and both the directions as per the ground motion and it resists the horizontal flow displacement to a particular extent in it so these are again the friction dampers that we have seen upon it this is the other type of friction damper pal friction damper and the next category that we'll be looking upon is the metallic damper so metallic damper as you can see here it basically called added damping and stiffness systems or you can say steel plate dampers generally it is called as adas dampers clear so added damping and stiffness systems it is termed as adas dampers so as you can see this is a portal frame being mentioned here and this zoom out structure is of the steel plate dampers or you can say the adas dampers so as the ground moves horizontally this a uh, lower portion that is the bracing portion moves in one direction whereas the upper portion connected to the roof or you can say the upper floor moves in the opposite direction thereby creating a resistance in this portion and these are the steel plates that we are talking about clear so this is how the metallic dampers is been functioning upon and this is the implementation of ada system in wells fargo bank san francisco california as you can see here these are the bracings and this is the friction damper that we are talk about if this load portion moves in left direction then the upper portion is moving in the right direction and this in the center portion it balances the both the displacements and thereby neglecting the total effect of the horizontal displacement and last we'll be talking about tmds that are tuned mass 
tempers. Now tuned mass tempers, these are basically used for following functions that are tall and slender free standing bridges. You can say bridges, pylons of bridges, chimneys, TV towers, etc. which tend to be excited dangerously in one of their mode shapes by wind or you can say by earthquake too clear. So these are the examples of the uh, structures where this type of dampers that is TMD is being used. If you say the, and if you talk about the actual construction side of it, it is basically located in Taipei 101 that is well, a well renowned structure in Chinese Taipei and the tower named Taipei 101 has this TMD in it and we will be looking upon how the functionality of TMD is. So let us take a look at the video. There is steel sphere whose weight is about 150 tons which is equivalent to of 30 elephants. The sphere was assembled for, from 247 steel plates. So this structure, this is not type A101, this is the alternative example of it. It has a diameter of 3 meters. So when the ground moves, the ball moves or the can say the sphere moves in opposite direction. This is the basic experimental performance of the TMD technology. This is with, without any control and this is with TMD. Clear? So as you can see here, it balances the overall displacement or you can say the overall horizontal displacement of the structure and this sphere is used in type I 101 skyscrapers and this is the actual movement of it during an seismic event or you can say that during an earthquake event. So this is how it actually moves and thereby stabilizes the entire building on it. Clear? So this is the very innovative technology that we have talked about and this is basically used in the very high skyscrapers and it is a recent technology. So it is been in demand in more cases. Clear? So these were the damping structures or you can say the structural damping control systems that we talked about. First we talked about the base isolation and then we saw about PEDs. Clear? So next session we will be talking about more special topics in detail. Thank you.